Hey, we're Mark and Lee on the Freeform Rock Podcast YouTube. Hey, thing. how are you doing? Subscribe, because we cool. <laughs> yeah, we are cool. Hey, we're like Fonzie, man. Get on there and get our good vibes, man. We really- yeah, we're Fonzie. Yeah, I decided today I'm going to have an ego like every podcaster out there. If I keep thinking we're great, then we are great, right? Well, <laughs> that almost sounds like a guy who says, if I keep thinking I'm wearing clothes, that means I am wearing clothes. And then the other guy says, right now, I don't even want to look to see if you have on any clothes, because something about what you said kind of doesn't sound like you're wearing clothes. It's just weird when people tell us, tell me they like our podcast and they like you and they like me and I'm going what's wrong with you? (laughs) That's how I usually felt when I was younger. I was like, if people said, Hey, you're a great guy. I'm like, well, um, do you need medication? You know, we're very weird, dude. We're like, we're not professional. We're raw. We don't edit shit out. We just talk our asses off and don't give that the way. Isn't that why we're good? Because most people, it's like, have you ever had, like, you you found stuff in the fridge and you just put in a big pot and made a great big thing of stew with all your leftover stuff and it tastes better than the stuff you ate at the hotel that was, like, bland? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. We're not the hotel. <laughs> We're the stuff in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, it's like... A- I don't know. It's hard for me to take compliments, but I'm glad you guys are watching. I'm glad you guys dig what we do. I dig what we do. And Bushy yeah, always I, gets on me. I need to teach that boy how to edit. And I go, dude, that's why it's called free form. It's just like we flow. We don't like cut things out. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't I mean, cut that out right now. He just freaking gave me a big old loogie in his mouth. But I didn't cut well, that out. Well, yeah. Well, well, with me, it's like, I wish I could have cut it out of my life, but I mean, it, it happens. It's like, it's like um, the guy who goes to the store and he has a, his wife and, 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 then, and then the cashier says, oh, why are you married to her? And he says, I don't know. She keeps following me around. I wish I just cut her out of my life, but she oh. keeps living with me. So <laughs> damn it. You know, you should, uh, you should do a, a book of Leeisms. <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought about doing a, life. a podcast of 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 episodes of just me doing different voices, doing jokes, or like like acting like different characters. Hey, did you ever hear the joke about the husband and wife at a carnival? No. Well, the husband, uh, the husband uh, is at the carnival, and there's plane rides for twenty bucks. Yeah. Oh, for 20 bucks and uh and the wife is saying i want to go on a plane i'm gonna play and he says ah and then the pilot finally comes up to listen i'll give you guys plane tickets for free give you the ride for free but if you say one word it's double so you owe me 60 like uh what is it 20 40 it'll be 80 40 bucks if you if you say one word so 80 dollars for both of you if you don't say a word it's free so the pilot's up there and he's like doing all these ups and downs and loop de loops, trying to get them to make noises. They don't make noises. And then he gets down, he talks to the husband and goes, I try to do all this stuff to make you talk or scream or say something. And he says, well, when the wife fell out of the plane, I wanted to say something, but 80 bucks is 80 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I heard that joke before. I think it was Mark and Brian on a, KLOS radio they they did it like a little skit of that oh okay and then uh did you hear that I, I read this one in playboy yes i see in playboy i'm a bad christian <laughs> um a joke where three I, three you're mo- not you're, you're you're about the same as I any don't. christian <laughs> uh, i don't push myself <laughs> on people uh I, yeah um, yeah you 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 might you might um um push yourself musically but i mean um I'm, I'm, I'm getting offended at it, but I mean, I'm, right now I'm still cool with it. So uh, this joke, three moms go into a, a therapist's office with their kids and the therapist looks at the one mom and goes, Brandy, 
your obsession uh he goes europe's notes to the one mom goes your your obsession with alcohol led you to name your daughter brandy and then he looks at the other mother and says, your obsession with sweets led you to name your kid Candy. And then the third <laughs> mother gets up and says, come on, Dick, we don't have to take this. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. So you know what her obsession was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I got a question for you. Let's see if I see if you th- say the same answer I'm thinking. What's the best part of the city opening up for you right now? Like p- pandemic rules loosen so you could do things. Um, I would say the main answer that is maybe not only for me, but for everyone would be how we can walk down the street without wearing masks. But if you were to talk about other than that, I would say it's my answer is still going to be my answer, but it's going to be half because I find that it's still somewhat disappointing. The venues have opened up so that you can go to see shows. But the thing is, some of the performers don't come out because of COVID. So for me, seeing the show is fine. But if I want to meet the people after the show, so far, some places still, or or, or some managers of the groups are suggesting that the people don't, um, the the performers don't come to meet the, the people. So for me, it's a disappointment. It part of why I pay tickets and part of why I wanted to go is because I wanted to meet them as well as hearing the music. Because I could hear them on YouTube or on, you know, a recording of their concert. But if I see them and it's a live experience, part of it is I want them to know a little bit about who I am. And so it doesn't matter whether or not they hear the music I give them, but if I at least can meet them and have a chance to interact and to give them something of myself, I think that's really cool. That's nice. You know, um, yeah, I've been the, my answer is that I could go to shows again. The venues yeah. are open. That's why I was seeing, yeah, I'm glad you picked that because I was hoping you would say that. But way I walked Yeah, well, that is, is the thing. Walking down the street that, without a mask, we could do that in California. Uh, so that's yeah. nothing for me, but that's cool also. But I do agree with the venues opening, and I've seen, what, three, four, sh- five shows now? Pat Benatar, Y&T, saw Lou Graham last night, T-shirt that you bought right here. On. on the back, it says, he'll come alive tonight. Uh, killer shirt. That's cool. And uh, my w- I asked my wife if she wanted a shirt. She goes, no. And then I brought this one back. And she goes, oh, I should have got a shirt. I go, you think? <laughs> mm-hmm. She liked the shirt. But um, yeah, but Lou Graham, when I bought the shirt, his guy is very New York, like all oh, poly. You know, he has that accent, the look, the pro. He looked like totally New Yorker. It's the guy. Yeah. And then the other guy was the Asia with John Payne. <laughs> this is funny. John Payne uh, shirts, right? And they're separate. So each merchandise each guy has their own guy yeah each band yeah. and the guy from the asia didn't have a line at all but luke graham had a line to buy his shirts <laughs> it was like wow you could tell who people were there to see yeah. um, how long was the luke graham line uh it was long was it like about 20 people or about 50 20 25 yeah because if it were me um i would have waited in line to meet him well they told me that when i bought the shirt come back after the show he'll be here signing your, he'll sign your shirt he'll take a picture with you for free and no at the end of the show there's like 60 70 people in line dude it was going, oh yeah to get a t-shirt it was long line in the beginning of the show but that went by faster but i'm just saying the t-shirt line for lou graham was uh very ample but the one for asia wasn't (laughs) yeah because i thought to myself 
Um, let's say um, not that I would do this, but if Madonna had a concert and she looked really, really hot and her show was like maybe 40 bucks and I knew that after the show, she would take a selfie with me wearing her hot outfit without a mask. I would wait 200 people in line to get that selfie. Yeah. I might not wait a thousand people, but I might wait 200. Well, my wife had needed to go pee and we live close to the, the, the I venue. hear you. And the bathroom for women, you know, guys piss all over the seats and all. It's a unisex yeah. bathroom. I, I didn't want her to sit, go in that restroom just so I could meet Lou Graham. So I went home. I said, let's go yeah. home, babe. I thought it was yeah. kind of rude for me to do that to her. She was going to go. No, sit. no, I understand. Dude, why do guys piss all over the toilet seat? <laughs> or lift up the toilet seat i don't know but uh i'm a guy and i, I if i do that i kind of get a wet wipe and clean it off and then wash my hands but uh that's me um yeah so yeah i, I would be like pissed off if um there was a celebrity and i was with a friend and and he said it's gonna be 10 minutes waiting come on i don't want to wait 10 minutes we gotta go now and I'm like, but this is our only chance to meet him. He's not going to be, um, you know, around too many places. This is a rare person. And they go, come on. And I go, that was my only chance to meet the horse, Mr. Ed, and you ruined it. You know, I had a thing because when they told me I could go meet him, I had a thing in my head that what I wanted to tell him. I wanted to tell him, uh, Mr. Graham, your album, Double Vision, with Foreigner. That's what got me into rock. You and the Beatles, Sgt. Peppers, were my first cassettes. And I just played that album to death when I was seven. And thank you for that. That's what I would have told him, you know. Yeah. But it was cool when I met oh, going. I didn't get a chance to meet him. I really wanted yeah. to meet him, but I cared more about getting my wife home to be comfortable taking a piss somewhere <laughs> than me meeting Blue Graham. Yeah. I did I did get to meet John B. Sebastian. You know who he is, right? The guy who did welcome back. Huh? Yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loving yeah. spoonful. So I, yeah, yeah, and 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 he was really good. I got a chance to meet him, so I told him that about his first album that I thought was really great and all that. You know what he said? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so, but at least he said that. Yeah, man, that's cool, man. I I've only met Oingo Boingo really, and uh, brushed into Britney Spears. But uh, that's good that she's free from her papa. That's cool. But um, don't, mm. still don't want to listen to her music. I'd rather listen to Christina Aguilera. Hey, yeah. that's something, I, even though it's not in our genre, but it, it's just funny. Remember in the 2000s with Christina Aguilera and uh, Britney Spears would fight constantly within the news and the media? I guess a little bit. So Britney Spears <laughs> is mad at Christina Aguilera now because they asked how what about Brit, something about her britney spears and she refused to answer the question so now that what is this the 2000s again <laughs> what is this news for two washed up artists who people don't really want to listen to anymore unless you're a teenage <laughs> girl unless you're a teenage girl from that era that oh britney you know whatever you know i'm just what do you think um i I kind of agree, but but I think that um, um, I think that it was trivial to begin with because at least they were both like very petty artists, and yeah. that and that it's like, um, hey, um, the guy who worked the wind machine for Michael Jackson's Thriller video is having a fight with the guy who worked the wind machine on Cindy Crawford's Pepsi video. Oh, and uh, I loved and, her and, and, back in the day. But Ooh. I'm I'm talking about the people who oh, worked yeah. the wind machine. But you just and reminded me of like Cindy Crawford's whole, on Pepsi commercial. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Well, well she's cool. I used to. I used long, to have a calendar. Long ago. Yeah, long ago, I, I was kind of irritated at her because I thought she looked like me. That was how weird I was. But anyway, <laughs> um, um, well, the eyebrows and everything. But but I mean, but I got over that. She's cool. But anyway, the thing is, <clears throat> would anyone buy a sealed magazine, rare magazine of the two guys who did a interview, who did the wind machine on both of their on, on Michael Jackson and Cindy Crawford, and all they do is um, talk about how one guy doesn't like the other guy's smoking cigarettes, and the other guy only talks about how he doesn't like the other guy's eating pastrami sandwiches without mustard. Would you buy it? No. Yeah, well, well I, I'm, um, just like I wouldn't buy any magazine that has the Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera feud unless they had pictures where they both looked really good and then it's like compare the pictures and then send in who you think is the best looking and you can get a date with them or something that then maybe i might pay 50 cents for something like that it's like in uh, the other feud that was kind of false was easy e and dr dre and <laughs> yeah it was kind of that's even at least Brittany and christina were women and 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 the other two guys i mean i'm like who cares i had the easy e album after dr dre came out with you know <coughs> nothing but a g thing it it yeah. had a, like an old picture of like dr dre going nothing but a she thing <laughs> like laughing they were just making fun of each other in their albums it was calculated because they're they were both very smart people you know dr dre is fucking really intelligent oh okay uh, I wouldn't review uh, a Snoop Dogg or. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm saying okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying no. Oh, maybe we'll do a, a Snoop Dogg album. No, no, I'm saying about their intelligence. <laughs> That's good. All right, man. Lee, we got to, we need to go, man. Uh, say goodbye, brother. Okay, goodbye, man, brother. <laughs>